And we're back. Um, now for Stories of the Week. Uh, this segment is sponsored by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. Segment also sponsored by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit www.sans.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. www.tenable.com. And looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring. Everything from programmers to researchers to sales and sales engineering. Check out all of the available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash Tenable Jobs. If you're listening to the show, check out the following two positions, both technical, both work from home, Nessus Vulnerability Research Engineer and C Software Engineer. And that's it. Thanks for our sponsors. And now... So which we, one of those positions is uh, like directly under you, Jack? Uh, they don't let me manage people, and I'm cool uh, with that. I <laughs> have done my time in hell of being an actual <laughs> manager, uh, and now I am on a two-person team, that, and neither of us even has titles. Um, <laughs> they put Marcus and I in a special little corner, and uh, they don't even give us a title. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have fun. That's playing important, playing really. with the pencils and scribbling. Uh, of course, uh, neither of you need a title, so it's kind of good to be yeah, it's, it. it um, Marcus certainly. Uh, what's Marcus's title? Uh, Marcus. What um, do you do for Tenable? I'm Jack oh, Daniel. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm Jack Daniel. Oh, I've heard of you. <laughs> no, not that one. No, no, I'm not talking about the drink. I know who Jack Daniel is. Uh, so let's see what else. on the door once in a while. <laughs> wow, Jack, you just turned as red as the tablecloth. Yeah, that's well, that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm here for. Both hands oh, are on the man. table. Hey, though. Michael. <laughs> hey, Michael, after we uh, stop streaming, before you drop off, I have to tell you something just to make you twitch. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> thinking about your past. So, before we dive into the stories, Larry uh, is teaching something in Berlin right now. Well, he's, he might be taking a nap now, but uh, he will be teaching SANS uh, 617 Wireless Ethical Hacking and Defense coming up in Las Vegas, September 14 to 19. Lots more places. Check the SANS website for more course offerings. And on to stories. Actually, I do want to just jump onto that plug. Larry is not only one of the best wireless hackers I've ever known, he's the only one I've ever known that successfully put an evil access point in a child's diaper, and it was still working afterwards. So, I mean, if you want to learn about how to do ethical hacking properly, that man knows you've got to double sure. diaper it. I'm, if you've been around I'm not sure diaper, about the ethics of that. And then another diaper. The man I, is a genius. I, I, effective hacking, maybe, but ethical, I'm not yeah. sure about the ethics. It was ethics. in the back of the Cross diaper. The it was fine. I'm not sure about the ethics of, uh, of <laughs> microwave radiation. Uh, you know, it's all. Baby well, that'll keep the kid from coming home pregnant. Uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> um, Wait, does, does his wife know about that? Hi. <laughs> uh, I think she knows better than... I, I think most of the wives know better than to watch, listen. <laughs> Dear God, I hope so. Um, it's, I get in enough trouble when my wife checks on my Beard's Twitter account instead of just checking mine, and then it, it gets ugly fast. Um, it's like... Those women weren't fondling me, honey. They were fondling my beard. That doesn't <laughs> cut. That doesn't cut any. It's an slack. Independent living entity, by God. <laughs> <laughs> is there a news story? <laughs> How about a news story? <laughs> a, uh, well, you know the one we got to do, Jack. Because all the years, and people who don't know us or know that we know each other for a long time, you and I talk about clue bats all the time. Yes. You went and found a clue bot. <laughs> yes, I did. I We've found a clue bot. All that. right. The clue bot. Now, this is not a security story because, unfortunately, I don't think we have any software that works like this, but it, <laughs> it's an interesting story. Um, there's a bot called the clue bot at Wikipedia, and this bot finds, f this <laughs> one bot finds 40% of the vandalism on Wikipedia and has a 0.1% false positive rate. So if you can do some patterns and predictions and heuristics or whatever big data threat intelligence it, it, it takes to do this. <laughs> right. um, they totally changed the game on this one. They brought it up a level. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, it, it's That's just really interesting bot. to see people that have had, you know, I don't know if you want to call this AI, but somebody's created a, a highly efficient bot with extremely low false positives. I mean, 40% of the vandalism on Wikipedia, um, I, I suppose that you could probably find 20% of it just by seeing anything that comes from Capitol Hill where it's, you know, <laughs> oh. well, it, that's a huge part of it is, is you know, con is congressional staffers sniping at each other. But, uh, you know, that's, that's part of it. I just thought it was interesting that uh, some of these bots are really efficient. Um, and uh, unlike, say, antivirus. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, it's endpoint point protection. We don't have antivirus anymore. It's really important to note the reason I think this, this bot works so well is that it's not just called Cluebot. It's called Cluebot Next Generation. Yes, it, I, it's true. And it's, it's I think NG. that pretty much takes it's it to the next yeah. level. Yes, I, I, I believe is, so. If you put NG on the end of any software product name, it, it totally works better. It does. Yeah, I mean, I felt the game changed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, that's, that's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Wow, I mean, the paradigm you know, shifted. The paradigm. It's, it's shifted right in front of you. Yeah. Uh, but you know, though, I, I tell you what. This so, by the way, uh, you know, th there are 12-step uh, pro. If you're trying to play the drinking game, <laughs> there are 12-step programs in your community willing to help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, well, how about picking a story, Kevin? <laughs> Well, I, I, actually, on this no. note, I saw an article come across yesterday about Wikipedia's most edited pages. Yeah. And uh, that just made me think of, of, of Cluebot. And uh, I find it kind of uh, interesting, the, the top 30 that are published. I'm looking at a, a Vox article, number one being George W. Bush. I, I feel like this bot has to work pretty hard. It's just on that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, just on that page. The, the second is WWE personnel. Oh, my God. It's pretty... All right. So the first two are the same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean... <laughs> Oh, um, Random tangent there, but uh, that bot has its work cut yeah, out for it. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I suppose those are actually a little easier. It's like every edit to yeah. George W. Yeah, Bush, yeah, yeah. Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Um, you know, those are just like, you know, it, it, that's got to be one of those where reviewers are like, oh, wait, that's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Uh, well, what, let, let's, let's go serious for a second. I found this article uh, talked about the top three security priorities for CIOs. I didn't mean to step on you, Kevin. No, no, but no, oh, no, I understand. It's great. No, no. <laughs> I, I, just heard the, I heard the needle come off the record right now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, I heard that, too. But, well, it's, it's, uh, here's the thing I thought about this. It, this came out and said, here's the top three security priorities for CIOs. In 2015, of course, it's released in June 2015. I guess it's better than giving me your 2015 predictions in January of 2016. Amazing. But but here's the thing. When I went and I read it, I'll give you the, the list. Patch faster. Handle credentials better, and and then go back to the source and handle and handle coding better. Bravo. But that's not the standard list. I mean, the standard list is blah 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 cloud, blah 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 mobility, blah 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 whatever. So I mean, is well, this the, the, the right list? The great thing is that he knows every environment has the exact same problems and priorities. But they can all be solved by moving <laughs> to the cloud, right? Yes, that's right. No, no, cloud ng. Cloud, cloud, NG. NG. Cloud, NG. cloud NG. Cloud NG solves all the problems you used to have yes. with the cloud. Yes. Uh, yeah. This this kind of lumps back into the uh, InfoSec 101, and I it was Adam Shostak that like six eight months ago I think wrote a post about that. So you can't call anything fundamental. You can't call it 101. You can't call it basics unless you've actually published the damned list. Yep. So I'm that with when the next one comes out and you say, "Oh, that's Security 101." It had damned well better be on your Security 101 list you published six months ago. Yeah, or but there's a caveat. I would if that invite list you to has be got silent. 200 things on it, no thanks. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, it, it needs to be fundamental, you know, and, and That's fair. we're not supposed to call it the SANS, it's the CSC or whatever, but, you know, that 20, imperfect, but there's at least a list, you know, and yeah, it starts okay. out with some really fundamental stuff, and it's fun to make fun of, you know. Fight them one, find all the crap in your network. It's like, well, do we really need to be told that? And as I say every time, it's like, yes. Apparently, yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, I, I don't know, it, it got page views. We're talking about it, so it's getting more page views. So good for him. What I, what I thought on, about, real, when I went through this article is that it immediately reminded me of the article I read just prior to this, which was about the OPM breach. These are the direct <laughs> uh, re recommendations of what um, OPM did wrong. Interesting. This, it, it, it's almost like word for word. I, I just okay, thought I didn't like, draw that connection. That's a good right. point. These are I, all yeah. the things they didn't do. Right. And these are the recommendations of why I, they didn't do I it. Didn't, I didn't link to it because I, I try not to link to a, a lot of directly tenable stuff. But Space Rogue did write a good article on the Tenable blog about the opium breach, basically saying, you know, talking about the, the director and why uh, he doesn't think she should be fired, that she, he doesn't believe that too many heads should be, ro that heads should be rolling. 
These people haven't been there that long. Uh, it is political. It's, uh, it's a challenge. I mean, it's very frustrating. Um, my faith in her was shattered when Obama defended her. But, um, <laughs> you know, there's a challenge. Because if you... Let's assume she deserves the blame, and I don't think she does solely. She, I mean, she's trying to run the business of OPM, right? Um, if she gets fired now, no one competent will take that job, mm. and it will Fair. not get fixed. Yeah. If, if, if her head needed to roll, which I don't think it does, if they get the, the focus, not resources, but focus they need, um, you know, six, eight, 12 months down the road, you bring in a number two, who's clearly the number one, and then you know she drifts off to spend more time with her family, uh, and then it looks better, and they they advance. So there are a lot of reasons not to do head rolling, no matter how much fun it is to say off with their heads. Um, well, yeah, I mean, didn't we miss an opportunity here? Isn't this when somebody who would be an actual leader could stand up and say, "Hey, kids, breaches are going to happen. This is highly sensitive information. Of course, people are going to come after it." And, and we're doing the best we can now, and we're going to learn from it. And, and gosh, I'd love to, it's the government, I'd love to see somebody say, let's, let's show you some of the things we could have done better. Because, you know, I, I am a little tired, uh, as I think a lot of other people are too. Like, okay, so after the fact, you give me a list of everything that they did wrong, and you show me that, well, they failed three audits of, you know, 500 things on this list, and so, of course, this was going to happen. Right. You know, and I warned you, like, 10 years ago, this was going to happen. Right. Okay, stop. Like, stop. Now... Could they have done things better? Yeah, probably. Great. So let's learn from that. Let's do that. I mean, I, I actually, I tend to agree, but I'm also typically the person pointing out that like the target CEO, uh, he didn't get canned because of security. That was a failed expansion into Canada. Right. New, C right. new CEO in place. They're, they're making money they hand over it. fist. Right. They botched Thanks, it. Everybody. However, that was a hand, that was a convenient and the, the security yeah, it was culture. Great cover. Security is yeah, great cover. And, and the security culture there has changed. Since that no question, departure. no question about it. It, no, it, it all a, a it packages the, it, it. it packages the PR story up up nicely. That's exactly um, right. Uh, I don't know the OPM though. It is um, it is interesting the the significance of that uh, the number of people that are compromised and it's not just clearance people. It's everybody that was interviewed to get it. So it's everybody's family. Uh, it is a treasure trove for. Um, for bad things to happen. Um, let's see what else. Well, while we're there, uh, Michael, why the federal government sucks well, at cybersecurity? Yeah, I mean, look, it was one of these stories. I I, I put it in there just because I, I I read it. I mean, it's it's a clickbait headline, right? So I clicked it. Um, but here's the the takeaway from it: is well, they suck at it because they don't have any mandate. And if they don't have a mandate, then they won't do it. it so serious. So everybody who's in security, we're only doing it because we were told. And we only patch things because we were told to. Like, I, I don't know. I, this made me a little bit nervous uh, looking at it. And gosh, I really hope that we don't say that. Uh, I'm not sure that they suck at cybersecurity. I'm not sure that they're better or worse. Uh, I think that people that have worked in the environment can certainly attest to the challenges of slow-moving bureaucracies. I think people that have worked in huge organizations can, can attest to the same types of a thing. So frankly, I kind of selected the story because I... I think it's counterproductive to, to, for us as an industry to kind of advance forward. But again, more importantly, just basically saying, right, here's the quote, you know, and, and it's Chris. And I know a lot of people like Chris Wysopio. I don't know him personally, but they don't fix them because there's no regulation or compliance rules that require it. If, if we think security is driven only by compliance, we're screwed. But I don't know. You guys, maybe you guys well, think it's different. The, the question isn't is security driven only by compliance. It's is government driven only by compliance. And those are two very different statements to make. Security is not driven only by compliance. If you care, uh, security might be driven only by compliance. If you don't care, and I think that my point would make itself if I said the next sentence. Yeah, but see, <laughs> this is the thing. I mean, like, I look. I anybody who listens to me longer than twenty minutes knows I am a big fan of a very small, limited. Please get out of my way, government. I don't really hide that. But but here's the thing. If you work for a government agency, I've come across a lot of people in security and in these agencies that they, they care. They do care. It's not they're not just punching a clock. So I just I just think that it's just kind of I don't know. I I think that when we come out after something and we go, yep, look, here's a here's a report, here's a public report. They were bad and horrible and they were told how bad and horrible they were and they didn't do it because they're bad and horrible. By the way, I didn't link to it, but I saw another article uh, that came out this week too and it said, well, you know what we should do? We should raise the salary of all the government security people. And again, I, I, I think we're missing the issues here. 
I don't think the issues are whether we're forcing people to do it or not. I don't think the issues are how much we're paying them. I think there's probably an issue of complexity. And, and there's, I don't know. I'm curious what else you guys well, think it is. There's the, there's the focus issue too, Michael. And I've, made, I've mentioned this before, and that is we're, we've still got a mindset in most organizations to focus on 100% success at defense. It's impossible. Agreed. All of us in the community know that that's impossible. Mm. Okay? So, uh, it, it, here we go, a little bit of free plug here. But at, at Black Hills, we are turning that, trying to turn that mindset around and say, let's focus on doing some more hunting for, uh, for, ac- for indicators of compromise in environments. Let's take some people that are normally focused on defense and actually put them onto hunting for actual compromise that has occurred and get them focused their entire time on that because they're more likely to have success if they've got a degree of, uh, of intensity focus there and knowing what to look for. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, we've got it wrong in the industry. We, we, we've got it wrong. We've got to change the focus. See, this oh, is where see, I this always like to up, say. This tees up another of Michael's stories, which is also uh, bullshit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, which could be why I put it there. So yeah, which yeah. one? <laughs> um, why it's worth divorcing information yeah. security yes. from IT. Yep. Now, here's the, I, I'll, I'll save you reading it. Yeah, yeah, you, weren't, you, weren't, sure. you weren't baiting, were you? <laughs> Let's forget anything it says other than this the two statements. One from it. Today's threat landscape requires security professionals to adopt a post-breach mindset and assume their organization has already been compromised. It's like post-apocalyptic, right? I mean, says like, Lior Div. Wait, wait. Now? Says Lior Div, CEO and co-founder of Cyber Reason. What does Cyber Reason's website say when you go to it? <laughs> Hunting cyber attacks in real time. Real time. Indeed. So a guy who founded a cyber attack hunting company thinks that we should abandon integrated security and technology and focus on buying his shit. Huh. Thank you, Forbes. Fell for that one, didn't you? Well, I mean, <laughs> and and I mean, no. By the way, I the entire rest discussion. of the industry is talking about operationalization, operationalization of security, tearing down silos. This dude wants to go out to Kansas and buy some used silos and put them back up. Yeah, horseshit. I, I would, <laughs> I would not make the assertion you abandoned defense. I didn't say that. No, you didn't. No, certainly um, not. I said focus some people on hunting for indicators. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. This, absolutely. It's, it's like. Uh, They didn't actually debate because it turns out they don't disagree. But uh, uh, in (laughs) in the past couple of weeks on on Risky Business, Ron Gula was on uh, responding to a blog post that uh, Richard Baitlick had had, uh, posted. And then Richard was on. And it turns out that they're both, you know, Richard, Mr. Network. I mean, Richard Baitlick, believe me, even though he wrote something that was talking about how you have to look for breaches and you can focus too much on... Uh, continuous monitoring, um, and he's at, you know, Fireman or Mandiant FireEye, whatever they are now, uh, you know, <laughs> where, which is all about, you know, incident, you know, detection and response and whatever, plus, plus the other stuff they do. Uh, uh, but believe me, Mr. Baitlick, uh, Mr. Extrusion Detection is not saying don't, um, d- don't try to detect shit and don't try to protect your network. He's saying you need to do both. And Ron, Mr. Network Analysis, is not saying don't try to find bad things, uh, you know. So, but it's they need to work together. They need to be balanced. Well, if all you're balance, doing yeah. is if all you're That's doing is looking for bad guys in the network and not making any attempts at security, uh, keeping them out, you're you're going to find lots. Um, you know. Yeah. On the other hand, if you're not looking for them inside your network, you don't know what's not working. Yep. Um, you know. I mean, it's it's to most of these pundits. I have the same response, which is, uh, in this case and many others, dude or woman, whatever, do that. Do that. <laughs> if this were easy, you could do it. Oh! oh. Yeah, I mean, clearly I, <laughs> I, the mic I threw this in there to, uh, to troll this a little bit. But uh, there's a, the other footnote that I would say to this, too, uh, and I'll leave uh, the, the company out of it, is I see a lot of times when people don't get what they want, they answer, well, screw it. Well, I, I, you know, I, I can't get what I want reporting to a CIO. They're totally conflicted. They don't care about security. That's funny. CIOs I talk to all care about it. You know, I can't do this if I don't report to so-and-so. I need to be this. I need to be, okay, guys, hold on. Slow down for a second. What's the problem that you're trying to solve? And so, you know, it, it's, uh, 
We're there. But, you know, I, I, and Joff, you, know, you said, you know, we're, we're doing it wrong. I, I, I don't like to say we're doing it wrong. I mean, you know, we can leave that to uh, the RSA conferences to tell us how bad we are. I, I think that the right answer is there, we can evolve, right? We've got opportunities. There's things that we can do differently. And part of that is that mindset that says, hey, wait a minute, we can be actively looking for things. Uh, I used to say assume breach, and I've caught quite a bit of flack for that. And I fought it for a while. And then somebody the other day said, well, why don't you just say anticipate? Oh, you know, that's a better word. Yeah, it is. So, it is a better word. So, okay, so anticipate now. that you can be breached. And that's, so go back to OPM. You know, if somebody stood up and said, hey, guys, you know what? We're doing our best, and, and these things are going to happen, and we're going to try to repair, and we're going to learn from it, and let's have a discussion about that. But no, knee jerk. Oh, we got to do something. No, would it be, you know, the terrorists are going to win. Oh, in fact, right, we'll, we blame this on China right, right off the bat, right? Did right, anybody right. roll the die? Was it, I, I, was it I supposed to be? Where are the yeah, where's, the, where's the attribution die? Well, when I, I don't know. There? It's over there. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm looking at these stories here, and I see a theme: uh, uh, government it, doing cybersecurity bad, do, and it, Samsung. The other one is Samsung. I was just going to say very bad week. Samsung. <laughs> oh God! So we both we each put one in there. You want to dive into the one you put in there? Yeah, sure. It, thank, so <laughs> thank God I have I didn't recently spend a lot of money on a Samsung phone. So, so. Uh, uh, recently, uh, an exploit, uh, a POC not available, came out uh, for Samsung devices, Android-based phones, based by, on Samsung using their proprietary. Uh, software keyboard that uh, they they I believe they bought Swift um, and they used that as an integrated into the Sam uh, the Samsung keyboard and then someone figured right, out but it's not the same Swift that you can install exactly in yeah, the they, store they took the same technology and, and rolled it into the default the def keyboard it's not the Google and it's not right. slide key or any of the alternatives it's a keyboard you cannot uninstall from the phone right. so no matter what you do oh, essentially better. when you use this keyboard as predictive text and it, as its process it tries trying to figure out what you're going to say next, and it queries a, a database Samsung owns to get the newest uh, definitions, if you will. It's stunningly accurate at predicting the wrong word, too, yeah, by the it's way. It's very good at that, but <laughs> also what it does is they found out if you use this phone on a Wi-Fi network, an attacker can see this query to the database of getting new definitions and turn that around into a bad package, kind of like an evil-grade attack, push down a backdoor to the phone, and since the keyboard runs essentially one level above root and is signed with... Samsung's private key, you now have pretty much full access to the entire phone. So you can pull GPS, wow. you can make a phone call, you can pull, con you have the phone. So just by using uh, an example that was given in the article I linked to, which is The Guardian, you join an open Wi Fi network, as we were discussing before. It's Our off. phones love <laughs> joining open Wi Fi networks, especially if they use the exact same SSID or wireless access point name you can now essentially attack an Android phone that's running Samsung, or vice versa, Samsung, Android. And they're, they're, they're quoting yeah. that 600 million devices. It's pretty much bait. Uh, it, I think you have to make the up, right? 600 but million. It's, it's the full yeah. Galaxy S line. Yeah. Now, the one thing that it doesn't specify, and I haven't seen listed anywhere, is I don't know if the notes are uh, covered because that keyboard is so stupid big. I don't know if it's the <laughs> same broken version, but it would be safe to assume it is. I haven't seen it because that's what I have for my Android thing as a note for. Um, but... You know, it's certainly the same. It's got to be the same, even though they spe they don't specifically call it. They say Galaxy S6, S5, and S4, um, but the Note is in the Galaxy family, so yeah. I'm assuming it is. Uh, I will say this: that uh, I tried to use my you know my iPhone 6 Plus with the you have to push the buttons to type thing, and after having Swift key and swipe forever, it's like this is yep. from my childhood, <laughs> and we wrote with rocks. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it's also Jack, so, no, let's let's talk about your pro Apple story. Uh, I mean the uh, Samsung yeah. update. So this one has uh, at least uh, this. The, the good news about this one is not a lot of people buy Samsung Windows laptops. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I saw this and I went, wait, I didn't know they were in that business. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is they have an updater. So my, you know, my oh, Lenovo has no. its own software updater, and it takes care of driver updates and other things. Um, but uh, this is uh, a Microsoft Store laptop, so Microsoft blows the OS away and does a clean build for you. Mm -hmm. So making this the first laptop I've had in, or computer of any sort I've had in a decade and a half or more that I didn't uh, sing the Windows song before using it. So everybody's, you familiar with the Windows song? No. I'd like to be, though. So the, the Windows song? 
F disk format reinstall. <laughs> Doo do, uh, So anyway, yes. um, that's um, uh, and we're running out of time. But anyway, so yeah, unlike Lenovo and a lot of others that have this thing that keeps uh, Samsung's disables Windows Update, and the reason is wow, ready. The reason is sometimes Microsoft pushes out updates that break some of the functionality. Like if it changes the driver for USB, sometimes the USB 3 port might not work, and therefore they've disabled Windows Update. So they're looking out for you. <laughs> I, I couldn't the, be happier about being a Linux user right now, but please it's, continue it's, your exciting um, story. You know, it's, it's just... <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So not just yum, trolling who yum bumped this. you, trolling yeah. Samsung laptop <laughs> users now. Yum I this. love Samsung, too. I really do. They I, make fantastic hardware. They, they remove do. the OS from yeah, yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Phones, uh, computers, whatever. So uh, anyway, yeah, there's that and, and that. And, and I don't know. Um, we need to wind down. Uh, last stories. Uh, Michael, is there anything on your list? Joff? Oh, Joff, you've got one. We should, we should have... Joff, say something. Yeah, I can. I can talk to this one well briefly. I, it was a, um, you know, it's it's an it's an old theme that's been uh, done before, but uh, some Israeli uh, researchers uh, mm. came out with a paper of uh, uh, a thing called Peter. Uh, Peter. Yes, <laughs> cleverly <laughs> named. It was kind of funny because it was it was pita bread that they were uh, floating this little piece of uh, electronics on, but actually um, their uh, terminology, Peter, was uh, portable <laughs> instrument for trace acquisition. There we go. Find it. Um, so they, they built a demo gadget to extract uh, decryption keys from uh, laptops by non-intrusively measuring electromagnetic, electromagnetic you like. I mean, so This looks really familiar to what we were talking about earlier, wasn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes, I mean, it does. this is fantastic. <laughs> and then they liked it because it was compact enough to conceal inside pita bread. Now, I was a little bit confused by that because if you accidentally did mistake it for your sandwich... That silicone wouldn't it's, taste it's very good. Some crunch. Yeah. Be, be really careful of putting <laughs> the garlic I, what's, sauce on well, Yeah, there. I was going to say, what's the what what would uh, the conductivity of hummus be? Yeah, <laughs> but they were successful. <laughs> we asked the hard hitting questions yes, here. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so they, and I'm trying to get to the serious. They yeah. um, they successfully extracted keys from laptops uh, running uh, GPG uh, within a few seconds uh, using mm. the hardware, and it was you know not non touch. It was it was EM radiation. Uh, uh, have to be within 50 centimeters of the device, though, of course, so there's that physicality that, that is a limitation. I, I don't let anybody eating hummus get that close to me while I'm computing, personally. Yeah, I could get it exactly. in the keyboard. It's really a problem. So if, uh, if you have an Israeli friend and they walk up to you with a very lumpy-looking piece of pita bread, uh, be nervous? I, I, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> That's, uh, One more thing to worry about, but, but Jack and I had his beard. I mean, really, yeah, this I is this beard. is very That's stealthy. Yep. It's a small device. This is exactly what I'm talking about. That it's it's things are so cheap, they're so small, and things are just way more vulnerable than we think they are. And this is just a fantastic demonstration of that. I mean, it's really yep. it's the pinnacle yes. of entertaining me to death. Uh, I mean, security. <laughs> it, it's, <Yeah. laughs> it's using all the new technology yeah, exactly. in in all the the new ways, and it's yeah, I, I love this story. <laughs> and with with we that, we cool. have uh, run out of time. So who would like to um, say good night? Uh, I think not Kevin should take us out. I oh, think man, not I don't Kevin. I don't know so the... thank you all for joining us. And over and out. Good night, all. Cheers, everybody.